Hi, I'm Jeff Kornberg, and on this episode of The Dragon's Tomb, I'm going to be teaching you how to play King of Tokyo. In King of Tokyo, it's 46 years in the future, huge monsters have taken over the city, and tonight is the night of their high school's big homecoming dance. Players take on the role of student monsters who are all competing to be crowned the homecoming king. To set up, take the double-sided board and place it in the center of the table, dance floor side up. This is Cyber Kitty, the most popular girl in Tokyo High and this year's uncontested homecoming queen. Place her at the front of the dance floor. Then, have every player pick a student monster and take the corresponding cardboard figure and popularity board. On your popularity board, You'll track your popularity with the star dial, and you'll track Cyber Kitty's crush on you with the crush dial. Finally, these are boasting cards. Deal two to each player. Now you're ready to start playing. The object of the game is to get voted Homecoming King by earning 20 popularity points. The tallest player goes first. On your turn, move your monster to the dance floor. Once there, it's time to try and impress Cyber Kitty with your dance moves. Take a black die and roll it while the player on your left acts as Cyber Kitty and rolls a green die. If you roll either a 1, 2, or 3, that's how many dance moves you'll get to perform. However, if Cyber Kitty's roll happens to match the number you rolled, it means she finds you kind of cute and doubles your dance move number. To start dancing, flick your monster to make them spin. You may flick them a number of times equal to the number of dance moves that you earned. For every complete 360 degree turn your monster does, Cyber Kitty gets dazzled, giving you one crush point. If at any point your crush dial reaches 12, you've proven your worth and gained five popularity points. Then, reset your crush dial back down to one and start over. However, be careful while dancing. If you ever fall down, you get nauseous from dancing too hard and must take one puke cube. If at any point you have three puke cubes, you vomit all over the dance floor and lose one popularity point. Additionally, if you ever accidentally hit Cyber Kitty while dancing, you kill all chances of ever winning her heart. Turn your crush dial to the skull because you are out of the game. Aside from numbers, the dice also contain hearts, hands, and power, which allow for actions other than dancing. If a heart is rolled on either die, you flirt with Cyber Kitty and gain one crush point for each heart. If just one of the dice lands on a hand, nothing happens. However, if both dice roll hands, you've initiated a special moment. Cyber Kitty locks eyes with you as both your hands reach out and gently caress each other. The moment is so intimate that it makes all the other players incredibly sick, and they each must take one puke cube. For each power symbol rolled, take one boasting card. The boasting cards contain different monster acts you can perform to try and impress Cyber Kitty, such as displaying your tentacles, showing off your armor, or demonstrating that you're good with babies. To use these cards, at any point on your turn, you may challenge another player to a boast off. When this occurs, a crowd of your classmates comes to watch the showdown. Each competitor must play one of their cards face down on the table, then flip them over at the same time. Each card has a power number listed in the top left corner, and whoever has the higher number wins the contest. The difference between the winner's number and the loser's number represents how many supporters the winner has earned, and they then take that many classmate tokens. Once you have five classmates, you may trade them in to earn five popularity points. Also, each boasting card has a bonus effect written on the bottom, often granting popularity and crush points in various ways. They also are either labeled Discard or Keep. If you play a card that says Discard, return it to the box after using it. If you play a card that says Keep, you get to keep the card, taking it home with you after the game is over, even if you're not the owner of the game. If you're the first player to reach 20 popularity points, congratulations, you've been crowned the Homecoming King and win the game. Flip over the dance floor to reveal the Prom Weekend side of the board. As Prom King, you get to take your queen to Tokyo City to celebrate. Or, if you beat the other players by five or six points, you upgrade and get to take her to Tokyo Bay, which is much more impressive and makes you look much cooler to all your friends. All in all, this game is a blast to play. 
I love how it depicts a future where society still places so much importance on popularity, and I completely agree with the message that being cool should always be our ultimate goal. Even if humanity has been completely destroyed and all that's left are barbaric monsters, it's reassuring to think that being popular and cool can still be an important priority.